Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video I'm going to be talking about iOS jailbreak exploits and really just exploits in general. Basically what they are, how they work and a bit about how they are created and discovered. So a lot of people know the term exploit but most people just see them as sort of magical files that somehow give you the ability to jailbreak your phone or do other amazing things without really knowing anything about what goes on behind the scenes or what goes into the development of one. So hopefully this video will explain the basis of what an exploit really is and how it works. So first of all, if you're interested in more advanced tutorials such as how to write your own exploits for iOS, then check out my second channel, which not a lot of people know about. I'll leave a link to this in the description. There's a couple of tutorials already on here about exploit development. Uh, there will be some more coming out soon as well as on this main channel. So go and subscribe to this to be notified when these videos are up. So if we first look up the computer definition of exploit, you can see this definition here. It's basically a way of using a bug or vulnerability in an app to your advantage to basically take control of the app and make it do things that it's not originally meant to do. So to be able to do that, we need to understand basically how our applications work at a lower level. Now a lot of people, a lot of developers can write amazing code, they can write thousands of lines of code in uh, languages such as Objective-C for iPhone apps and they can create pretty amazing apps such as this thing here, this um, 3D graphics rendering with reflection and all that stuff. But most general uh, developers will not understand what actually happens in the un underneath of their applications. They can write in this high level code, but they have no idea what actually happens at the low level components. And to be able to write exploits, you need to basically understand that. So as well as understanding these high level languages such as Objective-C, you also need to be able to understand and read the code that the device's processor actually executes. So this Objective-C code is never actually executed during the app compilation. So when you click this play button and it's converted and compiled, this code is all translated into ARM assembly code, which the device's processor can actually understand and then execute. When an app is actually running on a device, you can think of it as basically just a list of instructions, each with a line number, and each instruction just does one specific thing and then moves on to the next line. A lot of exploit writing techniques involve uh, rearranging the order of these instructions or using certain parts of them, chaining them together to be able to achieve other things. So for example, if you have some instructions that are used for adding numbers and then multiplying them, an exploit maybe could take these instructions, rearrange the order to basically produce a different outcome. To be able to see an app's instructions or produce its ARM assembly code, you can use a program such as IDA or Hopper Disassembler. These are both disassembling tools, so you open them and then select the executable file you want to disassemble. So for example, if we go into here, we've got the kernel, the iPhone 4S's kernel. On either you click new, this opens and then basically it allows you to select a file so you can just drag in the 9.2.1 kernel and Ida will recognize this as a Mako file for ARM v7, click OK and then you just follow through with all these options and it will disassemble this and produce you the ARM assembly code for the kernel. And you get a little warning about ARM and thumb mode instructions because on ARM processors there's actually two modes um, of execution, but I'll just click OK for that. And here we go, here's the ARM assembly code. So you can see the start. So this is where the kernel starts. And then you can follow through this, and obviously, you need an understanding of this to be able to read it. But this is how you produce the instruction. You can do this for any application, any binary, anything. So, because of how large and complex the iOS kernel is, it's not very practical to begin looking for a vulnerability by simply reading through this code. Many uh, hackers and security researchers go through a process known as fuzzing which is basically a way of supplying really unusual inputs or really large inputs into a program in an attempt that it crashes and then this crash can then be examined and a vulnerability can be discovered from that. So we're going to take a quick look at a simple example of fuzzing. You can see I've got my iPhone connected with SSH and in this directory we're in there's a simple app called Thing. If we run this you can see it says please enter a file name and this app basically is used for displaying the contents of a file. So we're going to enter the name of a file and it's going to basically open the file and tell us what's inside. So this, this is a text file, or this is a test file. So uh, an example of fuzzing this application would be supplying a huge file name. So obviously this a file name is normally not much longer than 20 characters at most. So obviously it's not designed to accept this kind of input, a huge string of A's. So when we do enter that, you can see we get segmentation for 11, which basically is telling us that the program crashed. So obviously it wasn't designed to uh, handle a name this large. So now that we've identified the crash in the program and a potential vulnerability, we can go ahead and disassemble it now and analyze and discover why the program crashed. So let's just open it in IDA 
we'll just drag um we'll go to the desktop and thing will open this application and you can see the same sentence as before it recognizes it as an rb7 macro file click ok and obviously this one will be much much smaller than the ios kernel because it's just a, t a test program that i wrote myself so you can see it gives us in this nice uh, flowchart form but we can now proceed to analyze what actually happened with this program so you can see that unlike the ios kernel this is just one massive function the ios kernel has hundreds of functions so this should be easy enough to analyze so let's just go for it we just want to ignore the first things at the top here and it starts here so if we go through you can see the first interesting thing we come to is the welcome to a vulnerable program string this is the welcome message that gets printed out as soon as you run the program and what this instruction is basically doing is moving it into this register which is later used by printf down here so printf is used to display the message on the screen so that's all this first bit does really display the message basically the same code is repeated uh, the other message please enter a file name the second message this is then moved into register one and then same thing here printf is used to display on the screen so that's just the start of this now the more interesting stuff comes what calls the program to crash so you can see the next function call is to scan f now if you look up scan f we'll find that it's used for reading um, data from the user and then storing it on the stack so it's quite obvious what's happened here from a security researcher's perspective um, it's just a classic stack buffer overflow obviously very simple for this tutorial um, basically what's happened is the buffer that was designed to store this um, string entered by the user was obviously only allocated a small amount of um, characters and we entered more than that amount of characters now scan f is a dangerous function which will continue writing the characters to the stack even if it's not got enough space for it so basically scan f is the vulnerability in this program it writes too many data too much data to the stack which ends up overwriting important information that the program actually needs and then which results in the crash so we've pretty much identified the crash already there's no need to look at any more of this stuff you can if you want if you're interested but scan f is the cause of this crash to look into this further you want to find out exactly what kind of information you've overwrote on the stack so we're going to look at this file the crash report for the program and you can see the kernel invalid address at 0x414140 so this is basically the reason the program crashed this is what the crash report gives us as the reason and what this means is that the kernel invalid address it was trying to look for instructions at this address here but it couldn't find anything because this address is invalid now what this is most of you already know if you're uh, even know the basics of exploit development but 414141 is the capital A's that we entered into the program and what we've done you can see in the register section the, the program counter register which is the register that always points to the next instruction this now contains um, capital A's which is what we supplied so we've overwritten the program counter which is a very big deal in terms of exploit development because now you can basically take full control of the program because whatever the address you put in here the program counter is going to look into that address and it's going to continue executing so you can change the flow of the program and make it do whatever you want so once the attack actually has control of the program they would then most likely point it to a payload that they've written which is basically their own code so they can make that do whatever they want if they want to use it maliciously then they can use it to steal information or damage the system deliberately or for example with an ios jailbreak they would use it to apply kernel patches and do other things that would allow the jailbreak to function correctly. So if you actually want to walk through on how to actually exploit that program and take control of it, then again, go to my second channel because this video here will teach you exactly how to do that with a similar example program, similar vulnerability. So it'll teach you how to exploit a buffer overflow and redirect the program execution flow and make it do whatever you want. So that is an oversimplified example of how a vulnerability might be discovered. Obviously, in real-world applications or systems such as iOS, vulnerability discovery would be much more difficult and the vulnerabilities that would be discovered would be much more complex than this classic stack buffer overflow that I just demoed. Uh, most modern vulnerabilities are based around the heap, which is another form of memory similar to the stack, but in most cases, heap overflows are more challenging to exploit. Also, gaining control of the program's execution would not be that easy in a real-world situation because there are many other um, anti exploit mechanisms that are built into systems such as ASLR, um, stack canaries, things that are basically designed to prevent you from being able to access or gain control of the program counter that easily. So in a real world situation you'd need to take a lot of other measures and bypass a lot of things to be able to actually do that. 
as I said before, if you do want to watch a walkthrough on how to actually exploit that in depth, then watch this second this video on my second channel. And if you want to see videos similar to this on my main channel, covering more advanced forms of exploits such as heap overflows or other things like that, then leave a comment down below. Um, but that's pretty much it for this video, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.